Well, hi, I'm Robert Knoll. This is the E Open Blues Journey, part six. E minor scale and the open position. We're dealing with like the basic open E minor chord with the open strings, the scale, arpeggio, and chords within the open position, which I would include an extension of the fifth fret. Open string, one, two, three, four to the fifth fret is what I consider open position. And if we go beyond that, we're extending out of open position. The relevance of E minor, once again, your E minor chord to a form two E minor bar chord. It's like moving your chord down, and some people call this the cage system. Uh, you would move that down to the open position. You have your E minor. You should examine all the chords you can in open position. How many E minors can you put? Realizing also in music theory that E minor is relative to the key of G. Very important. G and E minor contain the same notes. If you take your G scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, that sixth degree of the scale is E. And that's how we determine our relative minor. G to G would be a major scale. If I play E to E, we have a minor scale. So pure minor means we have a root, major second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor six, minor seven, or what we call a dominant seven, and then we're back to root. Let me keep going to the second octave. Of course, you have your root, your major second, your minor third, your perfect fourth, your perfect fifth, your minor six, your minor seven, and your root. And if we continued, you'd have major second, minor third, extend to the A, and that gives us perfect fourth. So this is within. I could also substitute some of those open strings for close. If I was doing uh, E and the major second, minor third, the perfect fourth is A, I could have played that as A here. Also, I could substitute. My B is my fifth. Uh, I could have a in the upper octave, I could have B closed instead of open. The C note, nothing we can do there. We've got our C going to stay here and our C here. So C is our minor six. So you need to see your intervals. You see your roots in E minor. You see your major seconds, which would be your, your F sharps. You see your G's as your minor thirds, your blue tone, right? Very important. <laughs> They're all important. A is your perfect fourth. And then your perfect fifth is your B. And then you have a closed B here, right? And then from uh, perfect fifth, your minor six, which is your C note. And then your D note would be your minor seven or dominant seven, which makes it a seven, is your Ds. It's important you see that so that you can build your chords. You have your E minor, you can have E minor seven, you can add nine, you can have a, a nine and a seven, you can bar the fourth finger for the seven and the minor third gives you that lovely, uh, we would call that uh, plus, we could say plus nine. We've added the minor third on the top with the seven. Lovely chord. Your third, like I am here, almost like a G chord, and bar your first finger, you have your minor third, perfect fifth, minor third, A, you have a suspension, which would be your suspended fourth. Ah, that's kind of cool. We could add the seven, and we could add the G on the top, and you have a G chord. You know, you've added a major six. The assemblance between your minor, E minor, and your relative major, or relative major to relative minor, E minor to G chord. Very important to see the relevance here, okay? The relative. Once you look at E minor and you look at the shapes, that I'm making here. You know, this basic shape here. A lot of people play this chord this way. I like it when you play it this way. It lends itself to some notes and it feels right. But this is an alternate way of fingering your E minor. 
bringing in that second finger for the minor third and maybe barring the first finger allows you also to bring in a closed B and another root up here closed gives you another um, variation or uh, inversion of E minor. So I can either have the minor third in the bass or the root in the bass. Very nice chord. Also, you see like you have D minor in open position. Move that up to E minor. So you could build off that E minor, right? You know, if you add your D in the bottom, that's a seven in the bottom. Put E in the bottom and you have this wonderful E minor. Okay, I could bar, bring in that B, which would be my fifth. Right? And E. So look, I have another wonderful E minor chord. So seeing your E minors. Now when you talk about your E minor scale, we want to look at what what's the blues in this scale? Well, the blues is the minor third, okay? I think that's the bluest note we have. But we also have this weird minor six. The C note. We also have the lovely major second, which is your F sharp. So I look at these notes as special notes beyond the one, three, five, the one, three, that minor third, wonderful. That's our blue tone. And you gotta have that perfect fifth like all of our scales, you know, so you got your. Your B, your perfect fifth. When I start jamming off of that scale, let me just improvise a little bit. Seeing my roots, that minor third power, I'm gonna put a little, so we get. Open G is an open minor third, wow. So we can hammer that in, we can bring that in with the hammer. And using the techniques of vibratos, Whole step to a perfect fourth to fifth. And fifth. You've got your trills, your hammers. I'm hammering the minor third to the open A to the fourth. Perfect fifth to the seven. Hammering the perfect fourth to the fifth. And then maybe I hammer the uh, that weird minor six or seven. So I could also pull off those notes. Back to hugging that root. Uh, we like to do that in all the scales. Here's that D minor form. I call it D minor form, but right here it's E minor. So that minor third, that G, that fourth, first finger bend on the minor third. There's that shape. Minor third. shuffle. Wow. It's kind of spooky, right? Don't want to get that. If we're sticking to minor scale, leave that tritone alone. That belongs to the 
the blue scale, which we'll talk about minor blue scale and integrating it with all the other scales. But even if I was playing major, if I was doing a major shuffle or dealing with an E chord instead of E minor and playing off the minor scale, I would still be bringing in the minor third, which is a blue tone, which belongs, of course, to the major and minor blue scale. So even though a major chord, I could still deal with that minor third. might be that minor six because if I'm in major ooh, it's, it's spooky it's almost like a really gloomy note but in the minor also has a mysterious effect in the blues so one a uh, very special note of that minor scale to me is that minor six minor third great second or nine. Major second is also called a nine up here when you add it. I like hammering that. Stevie Ray Vaughan liked to to the open G string minor third, the key of E minor. So if I was doing bass lines, I would be, you know, one, three, five. Minor six. Major second, minor third. So that's your, your suspended. Very special note to me. Once again, I'll say it's the... So my, my psychedelic tone. Six minor 
seven minor six. Two, nine, minor third. Fourth, seven. Hey, it's a journey. It's uh, doing explorations and learning what sounds good, what kind of techniques, what kind of bends can I bring in? Whole step bends, over bends, half step bends, increment bends. <laughs> and this has been another adventure number six sure you hit the like would be nice uh, subscribe i'd love to have you as a subscriber to know what's going on and be able to see all the updates and videos and lectures and things i do if you want to get deep into blues guitar if you want to get deep into learning guitar you might consider joining my guitar zone family is if you're really serious and want all the charts and have lessons with me, we can do remote, we can do visits. Uh, there's different levels of tiers, so I can get a little money to keep me going here. You know, I've got to survive. I'm getting older and just could really use some help. So you'd be helping ease my life a little bit, make my life a little better to continue doing what I love doing, and that's teaching and playing the blues. Maybe I'll even get back out on the road sometime and be able to meet you in whatever city or whatever country you're in, I hope. Anyways, I love teaching, so I would love to have you join my Guitar Zone and be part of my family. I call it my family, yeah. I've got students that have been with me who have uh, been loyal to me for many years. I mean, lots of years, decades, and they've been with me, and we study, and we have fun, and we use the guitar not only for performance and fun, but we use it for healing, to keep the dementia away. You know, we want to keep our brains alert thinking and doing things, the dexterity of things that we can do with our fingers and hands and jumping around on stage, whatever. <laughs> There's just a whole lot of good that comes out of playing guitar, being into music. And I love teaching it. Like I said, I'm into the psychology. I'm into the, I'm a wannabe neurologist. 
and psychologists, psychiatrists. I bring all of that stuff I study into what is my guitar philosophy. So I have a guitar. I'm a guitar philosopher. I'm a guitar scientist. I love it. Probably the thing that I'm best at is I'm a blues guitarist. That's what I have found that uh, is my forte. But I love classical music. I love Baroque music uh, so much. Anyways, I'm getting carried away again. Hope you enjoy the video. Stay tuned for number seven, part seven of our journey in the open E. Open E. We're dealing with open E. Everything in open E. Major, E minor, types of chords, the arpeggios, and what we can do. You know? All right. Bye.